Hi folks, it's Dr. Brad Semp here, aka The Busyness Doctor. I'd like to welcome you to episode 18 of The Busyness TV Show on busyness.com. This is the show dedicated to helping you to unbusy yourself. Today's episode is brought to us by our friends at Maximized Living. Maximized Living is a healthcare delivery system focused on helping to change the way that you view and manage health. In today's episode, I'm going to cover first what I call weird actions. And then I'm going to share with you an I Hate Guru segment with ex-professional golfer Matt Seppinen. And I'm going to wrap up with a video and a message about my youngest daughter Peyton. And I'm going to call it Crawl First. It's now time for our Buck the System segment. This is a segment in which we take a look at real life examples where people buck the system to produce extraordinary results. Now, what does it mean to buck the system? It means that you're not following the norm, that you're looking at what everyone else is doing and finding a better way, a way that is not mainstream. And I've talked about this many, many times before. And you may be asking me, Brad, why are you sitting out in your car? Why are you filming from your car today? You know what? Because a car is a great example of me being weird. This is a 2001 Ford Expedition. It's run down, it's beat down. People say, Brad, why don't you get a new car? I can afford a new car. I just don't want to get one. You know why? Because this is big enough to cart our five children around. I don't care if the kids run into it with their bike. I don't care if somebody uh, dings the door in a parking lot. And quite frankly, it's paid off and I don't have a car payment, right? So beautiful, beautiful stuff. Most people are going to go out there and lease or buy a brand new car. I don't want to do that. I want to be weird with my money. Now, I want to be weird in other ways in my life as well. And I'd like to just kind of bring to your attention a book here by Craig Groeschel, the founder and lead pastor at Life Church TV. And his book's called Weird Because Normal Isn't Working. Now, I was turned on to this by Michael Hyatt. Uh, Craig, awesome, awesome book. And not just because you talk about busyness in the first couple chapters, but because it challenges, you know, myself, challenges every reader here to really look at your life and figure out where are you taking weird actions. Are you norm living normally or are you living weird? Now, just look at this car. Take a look at the steering column here that's all tore apart. Now take a look at the rear driver's side door that is also all tore apart. We're repairing the latch on that and the, column, the steering column needs to be fixed. Do I need a new car? Maybe, but I'm not going to get one because I like to be weird. So what is it? What are the actions in your life and at work in the ways in which you are identifying and taking weird actions to produce extraordinary results? Scroll down below. I'd love to hear your comments on both the weird action concept, but also to talk about what weird actions you're taking. So let me know, and I'd love to engage with you there. It's now time for our I Hate Guru segment. This is a segment in which I interview not gurus, but experts. And today I have a very, very special guest. He is a former professional golfer on the PGA Tour, and he's a good friend of mine who now I look to uh, to help me with my golf game. <laughs> Actually, like any other person who retires from a job, he really doesn't golf a ton. But what he does do for his daily life now is help people, the layman golfers like myself and other men and women, to improve their golf game, whether it be for personal reasons, just enjoyment, or as part of business because you're looking to take out clients and at least hold your own. So I'd like to welcome to the show a gentleman by the name of Matt Seppinen, and I'm sure that you're going to enjoy this interview. So, Matt Seppinen, welcome to the Busyness TV Show. Glad to be here, Brad. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, hey, the first question that I always ask any guests on my show, the I Hate Guru segment, is you're not really a guru, are you? I, I answer that question differently for different audiences, <laughs> but the story is, unfortunately, kind of a reluctant guru. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. So, well, you did play professional golf. Yep. So... I, I guess that puts you in that, but I just don't like the word guru. So we're not going to call you that today. We're going to call you an expert. How about a reluctant expert? A reluctant expert. All right, That's we'll fine. go that way. How about just a golf pro? Yeah, there, that works All too. All right, cool. So <laughs> the first thing that, you know, you've got your million dollar golf lesson here. Yep. We're going to talk about a few other things as well. But the first thing that I've heard you say, and we're going to go do this right after this interview is done, okay. is you say that today you can shave eight to 10 strokes off my golf game. That is true. Guaranteed. How? <laughs> um, course management, better decisions, uh, working on some just some basic uh, decision-making techniques that will get you that putt to break 90 or that putt to break 80. 
Okay. Or 70 or 100, whatever you're Are you going to walk the course with me? You I've done caddy? that in the past. You going to caddy um, with me? I've done that in the past, and I've never had somebody shoot less than nine shots better than their lowest score. However, since I can't do it for everybody, just time won't allow me to, and effort. Um, not really scalable. No, no, not scalable at all, which I know we've talked about. Uh, best thing to do is practice your short game and make better decisions on the course. Okay, so other than you caddying for me, which we're going to do in a minute, yep. the next best thing would be short focusing on the short game? Focus on the short game. In fact, I'll give you a little story. Um, my wife. Uh, we spent a winter in Arizona getting ready to play the tour one year, and my wife went out uh, January 1st we played. When we first got out there, she shot 110. Uh, for the next three weeks, she'd go practice her short game when I'd go practice my short game. And she didn't go every day and for the full three hours that I'd spend on it, but she'd go you know, two or three times a week for an hour. And the next time she played, she shot 84. So it's all short game. <laughs> Now, you know, granted, those results aren't typical, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> hey, I put, but, put a know, disclaimer on that one. But, you know, I know how to practice, and I know how to get people yeah. better at golf, and, and uh, not only does it work for me, it works for other people as well. Awesome. So we have limited time right now uh, yep. in this particular interview, but what is the biggest mistake that an amateur golfer makes to maybe sabotage, you know, their, their golf game and their, their score? You know, I see most amateurs will make the mistake. They'll go out and they'll hit balls for four hours or two hours or whatever it is, and they'll work on what... Golf Digest tells them to do, and then they'll go play on Saturday, and they won't get any better. And then the next time they go play, they they watch uh, they'll watch the Golf Channel, and they'll get a tip there, and they'll go work on that, and they're not getting any better because there's no continuity in what they're mm -hmm. working on, and so they get really frustrated, and they end up uh, really developing a a distaste for the game. Yeah, that's what I that's the biggest mistake I see amateurs do. Pretty similar to the entrepreneur market, how you're yeah. you're chasing that shining red ball. So yep. Somebody says do this, they go do that, they buy that product or course, and then they go over there and they buy that other, Very other product. Very similar, of course. Yeah. And that's where we really, I think we were talking, and we had a lot of similarities from your busyness product line and and just what I saw in golf, and I think that's where our our synergy comes from. Here. Yeah, abs absolutely. So I teach in underneath the business platform a concept called action units. Yep. An action unit is is one 15 minute dedicated, focused, uninterrupted period of time where you're taking action on something to produce results. Yep. So in golf, maybe from a practice perspective, you know, busy people, there's a lot of busy people, a lot of uh, businessmen and women that, that like to golf or do so as part of their job, but they don't have time necessarily to get out as much as they'd like. What is one action unit, one 15 minute segment that somebody can do consistently, whether it's every day or, or a few times, a few days a week to improve their golf game? I'm, I'm going to actually go the other route and say, okay, you're busy, you've got a family, you've got a wife, you've got kids, you've got a, a hectic job, um, you don't have time to practice, what's something that you can do when you don't have time to practice? Okay. And I call it my 15 minute play well plan, and everybody's been to the situation where they're pulling into the course and they've got 10 minutes or 15 mm -hmm. minutes before their tee time. What do they normally do? They grab their driver, they race down to the driving range, they try to pound four or five or six drivers, hoping they're going to find that yeah. that magic bullet. Yeah. Uh, and then they go the first tee. They're already they're they're feeling rushed. They're feeling anxious. They hit their first tee shot out of bounds or into the water, or they roll it off the first tee, whatever it is. I, I'm going to tell you what to do with those 15 minutes. Awesome. That you normally wouldn't do. Love it. You're going to take your time. You're going to go to the putting green and the chipping green, and you're going to spend a few minutes, you know, hitting a couple chips and pitches. Uh, then maybe you know, hit a few bump and runs, you're getting a feel for the greens, you're going to spend some time hitting some short putts, and when I say short putts, I mean, you know, three, three footers, two, yeah. three footers, just get used to seeing the ball go in the hole, it's amazing how calming and relaxing that is, then work on some long putts, because yep. chances are you're going to have a long putt on yep. your first hole, you know, if you can two putt that instead of three putt, and it, it changes your focus for the round, and, yep. um, and then spend a, a, your, your last couple minutes before you head to the tee, uh, just hitting some four or five footers, going through your normal routine that you'd go on the golf course, so you're essentially rehearsing what you'd do out there, yep. walk over to the tee, take a few loose, you know, relaxed swings, and then uh, away you go. I love it. I love it. And I know, Matt, you went through very fast on that 15-minuter, yeah. that but in Unbusy Secrets, you're going to get the opportunity to watch a much larger, longer, more in-depth interview with Matt where we're going to cover that particular point, really the for me, the process of exactly <laughs> that, that 15 minutes of how to leverage well, that time. So. And, and I know in the longer interview, um, there's also, that's the 15 minutes before you play. Yeah. I'm also going to tell you what's the most important thing you do the 15 minutes after you awesome. tee off. So I'm going to give them two action minutes. I love it. I love it. So, well, we're out of time for now. Where can somebody find you? Golf63.com. Check it out. Golf63.com. So Matt Sepinen, thanks for being here. Pleasure. Yep. Pleasure as always. Take care. So welcome back. I hope that you enjoyed that interview with former professional golfer Matt Sepinen. You can see 
all the little action units, powerful, powerful action units that Matt shared with us. How cool is that? And what I'm more excited about is the next 30 minutes or so that I'm gonna have with Matt in the more in-depth interview as part of our Unbusy Secrets program. So if you wanna jump in on that, it's an absolutely opp great opportunity for you to not only receive the in-depth interview from Matt, but two folks each and every month, including the, interv the interviews and video and transcripts and MP3 and some lots of other goodies, come visit us at unbusysecrets.com and sneak in to the back end. So thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in two more weeks with another special guest on our I Hate Guru segment. It's now time for our Design for Action segment. This is a segment in which we help you to design the right action at the right time to produce the right results. Now, the D for design is the second step in the ideal action process. The ideal action process being I for identify your intentions, D for design for action, E for execute your action, A for analyze your action, and then L, learn from your action. This is an iterative process, a process in which you don't just go through one time, but you repeat and you loop back over and over and over again as you execute action, you analyze and you learn from it, and you make adjustments in your design. Now, what does that all mean? Well, I have a cool little video here of my youngest daughter, Peyton, just the other night, who my wife and I were laying around on the floor and playing with her, and she's at that point where she's almost crawling, but not quite crawling, right? So she's more army crawling and pulling herself ahead with her arms, and her knees are all red because uh, even though she'll at times get up on her knees, she's actually dragging them across the carpet, right? So take, take a look at this as, as she crawls and I talk here. And the point of this is this, that when you design for action, it, also the concept of 10% perfect, you do not wait until you're perfect. If Peyton waited till she could perfectly crawl, she would never get to the point that she could crawl. You have to take the steps that, that are necessary to get better and better and better, right? Same thing happens in your business. When you're looking at your business processes or your systems, right? Just put stuff on paper and move ahead. Don't get all caught up and bogged down in you know, the perfect system. Just get going, get started, and just like Peyton, before you know it, you'll go from being up on your hands and knees to doing an army crawl and pulling yourself ahead and dragging your knees to being up on your knees and crawling fully and then beyond leading to walking, running, and sprinting. So the same way that Peyton is evolving and learning, that's what each of us needs to do in our life, in our business, as we take action to move from busyness to unbusy. Don't get caught, don't get stuck, do the best you can, move forward, and then go back and improve. So what do you think of that Design for Action segment? I'd love to hear your, your comments on Peyton's crawling or how that you, know, you, you can internalize or apply that lesson to your life or to your work. So scroll down below and leave a comment. I'd love to engage with you. So that wraps up today's episode of the Busyness TV Show. I'd like to thank you for watching and invite you back each and every Thursday here at busyness.com. You can subscribe here by entering your name and email address to receive show notifications each and every week or by going to and subscribing at iTunes. So we'd love to see you. Either way, make sure you get, you're receiving the notifications of our show. I'd also like to remind you to like us at facebook.com forward slash busyness TV or at Twitter at twitter.com forward slash busyness TV. I'm Dr. Brad Semp. I'd like to thank you for watching and look forward to seeing you right back here next Thursday. Take care and bye-bye.